What's going on people? Uh, today it is Saturday, actually Halloween, and I got something different here. I'm going to try to show you guys that uh, I don't know that there's any videos of this online. Uh, this is a customer's gun. He wants to have the barrel threaded for chokes, so interchangeable chokes. Um, I have so far I've made a, and I'll get to this, I'll show, this, show these things, but I made a, a, a tapered adapter for the chamber um, to be able to chuck this barrel up in the lathe. And so far I've got the barrel indicated, but I'll show you what we're going to do to be able to hook this thing up to the steady rest and actually be able to machine it and then thread it on the lathe uh, for Remington 870 chokes, I believe. But anyway, uh, I will get the thing hooked up a little bit better and show you what I got to do next and then I will bring you back. All right, so we are back again and you can see here, I got this barrel set up in the lathe. And what I got here is this, this was the tapered, a lot of people don't realize this shotgun chamber is uh, tapered. I think it tapers about six thousandths every inch. Uh, so I machine this, it's a perfect, perfect fit into the chamber that holds that there and then I've got the barrel in here and it's indicated now but what I've got the tape here for is this is the length of the and this uh, you know indicate by the internal diameter not the not the OD the OD is never typically never true to the bore center line but anyway um, I got this piece of tape here just as a uh, kind of like a depth check of how far down uh, the shoulder is going to have to go when I start cutting and uh, threading. And most people probably don't show how to do this online or on YouTube because most people use a uh, they got a, a it's almost a reamer. It's like a forming tool reams this out and then they run a actual tap. And that's how most people uh, cut, well, not cut, well, I guess technically it is cutting. But anyway, that's how most people do it to uh, make a barrel take chokes. But I'm going to do it on the lathe because if you do it right, it's not just as good. It's actually better. Um, so, But I'll show you something real quick. And what you got to do is you indicate the last... Well, probably about like this, about inch and a half, two inches. You indicate that true uh, because that's the portion you're going to be machining. And the end of the bore of anything, shotgun, pistol, rifle, uh, the length of the barrel that has engagement surface corresponding to the bullet or wad is what matters that's the portion that's the last portion of the barrel that's going to actually direct the well you know the uh, alignment and the direction of where the shot's going to go so uh, I've got this portion internally um, indicated and I'll show you what that does you'd be surprised how shotgun barrels and some rifle barrels are but you'll I'll turn this dude on and you will see how I guess uh, not straight the barrel is so you can see right here it's nice nice and straight it's been concentric and that's just the OD showing but you can see how out around not out around but I keep catching my uh, microphone but you can see how that dude is not centered at the chamber end but that end is so what we got to do now is, uh, you know, I obviously can't do any kind of internal machining or threading if I've got my live center in the way. So what I made yesterday, I made this here. This is called a, let me get it on camera, there we go. This is called a cat's head. Just made it out of a piece of chromoly. So what we're going to do is put this on, on the barrel, get it, get this thing indicated straight and then the steady rest will ride on this surface allowing us to 
machine the uh, barrel and obviously the reason we can't put the barrel straight on the steady rest is because of the the rib of the barrel and also because uh, this is not concentric with the center line so we have to put something there that we can make concentric and that's going to be this cat's head here so I'm going to try to get this thing dialed in and uh, get that set up and then I will bring you back and let you see what that looks like all right people back again so I got this thing uh, this cat's head that I made all set up and got it indicated in and I've still got the barrel in the live center so I'm going to show you what it looks like uh, spinning now you'll see how true it is I got the thing down to less than half thousandth and then I'm going to put the well I'm going to install the steady rest and show you what that looks like hooked up and then we can begin machining so you flip you around show you what we got all right there we go so got this dude hooked up you can see it doesn't matter but i got it straddling the uh rib that way we wouldn't push down on the rib and crush the thing so i'll fire this dude up and let you see how true it is <laughs> There is absolutely no run out. I know the screws are deceiving. If you look at just the cat's head, it's turning perfectly true. And that's going to give us a uh, place to uh, have our steady rust ride on. So there's that. Shut that dude off. And then I'm going to uh, get the steady rest hooked up and uh, bring you back there and then we can do some actual machining and threading and hopefully not destroy this guy's barrel <laughs> bring you back here in a little bit all right guys we are back again so i finally got this thing set up got the uh steady rest in there and i ran into a little problem kind of i'll show you it's i think i got it worked out now so it's not a big deal but flip you around here and show you what we did and how it's set up all right so we've got the barrel with the cat's head in the uh, steady rest and the little problem I ran into was you see the clearance on them bolt heads to the fingers of the steady rest they were just barely touching, so I had to take my file. Because what I, I, I could only find, uh, these are quarter 28 screws. I only had these stupid hex heads. I really needed some Allen head bolts, but this will have to work for now. So what I did was I filed the inside edge of the, the bolts there. So that dude's in there. And go ahead and turn it on. And show you what we got. It's kind of gratifying to watch this. So, you can see, it spins nice and true. So that'll give me, uh, that'll give me perfect availability to be able to machine that. So, flip that dude off. So now that that's all set up, what I got to do now is figure out some math, or some of the smart people would say maths with an S. It's weird. Anyhow, <laughs> um, so I got to figure out uh, the inner diameter that I've got to bore that out to, and then I've got to cut a little gutter relief in there for my threading tool to fall into. So I've uh, got to do some math and then once I get everything all set up with my boring bar and everything uh, then I'll bring you back again so bring you back here in a second all right folks I got you back here and uh, this is about the best view I can get and this is honestly got the camera right in my way but uh, what I'm going to do now is pour this thing out for two inches and 33 thousandths deep uh, we got a board out to inner diameter of 781. Don't know where it's at now. I can't remember. I just mic'd it. It's somewhere in the 6, 680 something 
690. I don't know. But anyway, I got to get it to 781 at uh, two inches and 33 thousandths deep. And then uh, I'll be able to machine the second portion for the shoulder of the choke and then cut the threads. So I'll probably do a little bit of this with the camera here so you guys can see it. But I might end up having to just do it off camera and show you the end result. Because like I said, this thing is really, really in my way. Uh, I will show you real quick something else got going on. Do, 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 do. I've got my indicator set here. And this will show me. Now I also got a black mark right there on the ways. And this dude comes around, comes around, comes around, comes around, and boom, hit zero. That's my shoulder. That's my stop. So I've got that guy set up. Other than that, uh, something else I do too, is I write my spec. The spec actually for this for this internal diameter is 779 to 781, or 784, so I'm picking 781. Uh, that's what I'm gonna shoot for, but I often write things there on the cross slide, because you know I can take acetone, alcohol, even WD-40 and wipe it right off, but it's a good reminder, something that I like to do. So let me try to get this guy back here. I'm sure it's gonna shake around. Let me see here if I can try to, here we go. I'm gonna to try to do this with you guys here and see what happens. I'm gonna be taking this light and easy, taking real gentle cuts. Um, Cause you know, really anytime you use a cat's head with a barrel in it, you should. I mean, it's clamped down real good and everything, but I just don't wanna take big old beefy cuts with it. So here we go. Right there, was, oh, shoot, hit the camera. Right there, what I was trying to do is touch off. And I did touch off. So, I'm going to take a little easy pass and then stop at our shoulder when we get to it and again going real light and gentle back again so I got the boring operation done and so normally I would have to thread this uh, which is the part I normally hate the most but of all things and I cannot believe this happened a buddy of mine who lives uh, about five minutes away from here stopped by and he saw what I was doing and he goes you know I got a tap for that you can borrow so dude are you serious so he ran home and grabbed it and it's a 13 16 by 32 tap meant for rim chokes. So the nice thing is I got the uh, boring operation done. Now I can just run a tap in here and finish this damn thing and call it good. But let me flip this around and show you. Let me flip it around. Show you what we got, what we did here. I don't know if you can, you can see the shoulder in there. The very back shoulder is the one that the shoulder of the well the choke will butt up against and then the second one that's where the threads are going to go that's the uh, minor diameter for the threads and then the rest you see here and this one here is 
It's a tight fit. I, I, I like it to fit well, not be all sloppy. But that dude fits right in there. And then that'll be, that's about you know the, the length of the threads. Uh, so it'll screw in, be nice and flush. And he will have chokes. Just out of curiosity, let's see what we got. Hard to do this. I can't get any light down in there. But anyway, you got to make sure that the shoulder, the, the bore has to be, what is it, smaller than this bore. Hang on, smaller? Bigger. Damn it, I'm brain farting out. Um, has to be smaller, yeah, or else the wadding would hit the shoulder here inside there. So that has to sit uh, basically inside and then it'll work properly. So I'm going to do the tap operation. Hopefully it goes well. And then I will bring you back when this thing is hopefully and finally done. So be back in a second. All right, so I brought you guys back just uh, enough to kind of see what I got going on here. I got the tap started, uh, got it lubed with some uh, cutting fluid, and I've got my center, live center, dead center, doesn't matter which one you use, uh, but I've got the center of my tailstock in the tap, keeping everything perfectly aligned. So what I do, and you can't see my other hand, is, is I'm feeding in the tailstock as I... Uh, as I tap just to keep a little bit of pressure on it and I may have I may have reached the end so let's see here some compressed air here blow this thing out and uh, Can't tell whether it started or not, such a fine thread. It started. Don't think it's all the way in there though, but oh well. I uh I'm gonna finish that deal up and I will bring you back when it's all finished. And by the way, that choke should be flush in there when it when the threads are fully cut, so bring you back. Alright. So we're back and I got the barrel out of the lathe. Uh, thank God for that tap, that was a lifesaver. I'd still be over there threading that damn thing. If I had a single point thread it in the lathe, which isn't a big deal, it works just as well. Uh, but tap is much quicker. So I'm gonna have to order me one of those damn things. Anyway, so I got the barrel here in the vise and I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you uh, as well as I can. I think I got a flashlight, so. Show you the finish and the fitment of the choke. All right. That's, of course, naturally going to grab a flashlight. And then the camera gets in the way. Anyway, you can see. Of course, I don't know why threads don't like to show up. Fine threads don't like to show up on camera. It's real nice threads. I mean, you. Like you would suspect the tap would cut, but uh, yeah, turned out good. So we will take a choke here. For the life of me, I cannot find my choke wrench. I don't know where in the hell it's at. Probably got lost in the move. But that's all right. We'll uh, adapt and overcome. We're going to use a washer. 
poor man's choke tool. Any day now. Fun part about a fine thread, these things take forever to get them in there. Bear with me people, don't don't fast forward. There we go. Always seated. So as you can focus. There we go. As you can see. And I'll show you what I was talking about. You'll see the shoulder in there. See how you can still see the uh, the bore of the barrel is larger than the choke. Well, that's how you've got to have it because if it was the opposite, if the bore of the choke was smaller than the bore of the barrel, the wadding would grab the thing uh, and either destroy the choke or could even burst the barrel. So. Uh, not every barrel can be, you know, threaded, machined and threaded for chokes because of uh, bore size and clearance and things like that, and the wall thickness of uh, the barrel here. I've got, I think it was 20 thou wall thickness all the way around. Uh, that's about as thin as I feel comfortable with going through or else the thing can get, you barely tap it against something, it would get dented and dinged up, and uh, the more the merrier. So you don't want it to get real super paper thin. But, back, back I am. Uh, <laughs> so, thank you for watching. That was uh, not too bad, it wasn't too bad. You know, it was just took more time setting up that cat's head and getting that thing indicated and getting the bore straight and then verifying that it was straight because you don't want to uh, machine and then thread and make the, you know, where the choke goes, make it crooked. So uh, it turned out nice and hopefully, hopefully the customer will be happy. And thank you for watching and do me a favor and uh, like and subscribe if you want to see me do more stuff. I try to make, you know, some random videos of some of the things that I do. It's hard to do though because it takes so much time working the camera. I'm going to turn a job like this from a, you know, two hour job to a four hour job just because the camera's in the way and I'm trying to get things set up and it's gonna be a pain in the ass but yep like subscribe all that good stuff and I will see you later folks